Hey everybody, how are you? It's Dominic Rubino here. Dominic Rubino here from Profit Tool Belt. How are you? We are continuing on with our sales series. Uh, so glad to have you here. You know, um, it's such an interesting time we're in right now. I'm not going to dwell a lot on that, except to say that some companies have really stepped up to the plate and done what you'd consider to be the right thing. One of them is HESPV, uh, Home Energy Solutions. They're a solar panel distribution company. And uh, they contacted me and said, hey, listen, we've got to do more support for the construction industry, for the trades. So they deal a lot, obviously, with solar panel installation companies and roofing companies. But today's episode is for all of us in construction. I just want to point out a very special thank you to HESPV, who went ahead and sponsored this whole series. So all of this is being brought to you on behalf of them. So thanks to you guys for doing that. Today, we're going to be continuing our series on sales, more specifically selling trust in a time of instability. And uh, what crazy times we're in, right? Uh, more information on this is actually going to be coming up. I submitted an article uh, to Forbes. Forbes was looking for tools for business owners as well uh, for this time, you know, for the things that are going on. And so I submitted an article to them called Selling Trust in a Time of Instability. And so we're actually going to be doing this series here. What's interesting is that trust has always been one of the most important factors in making a buying decision. Uh, it just so happens that right now, trust is going to jump to the top of the list because there's four things that people look for when they're making a buying decision. You can test this right now. You, me, all of us, we make the same same kind of decisions in our mind. I need to know and understand budget. So does a person have money or do I have the money to buy this? Need. Do I need it? Why do I need it? Right. So budget, need, timing. When do I need this thing, this product, this service, this installation, whatever it is? We got budget, we got need, we got timing, and then we have trust. Do I trust you? Do I trust that you're going to show up? Do I trust you're going to do the work? Do I trust you're going to do good work, etc.? So those four factors have always been in in the sales ingredients, if you will. It's just that now trust is going to move to number one position, and price is going to move down, which is the way it should be. Those of you who run really strong and solid businesses, um, you're going to see the benefit of this. So each of these seven. Uh, components, each of these seven chapters I'm going to go through as quickly as I can so it's not too long. But what I'm going to cover on each of these is this, and I'm looking at another screen here because I have notes to keep this efficient as possible. In each of these segments, we're going to talk about the goal for the stage in selling that we're at. We're going to talk about the best outcome you can get as a professional in each stage. And then what are some trust tips? So what are the trust tips? What are the things we can do to prove that we're trustworthy, to show we're trustworthy? And quite frankly, some of us are going to have to go back into our companies and make some changes to be able to prove and show that we're trustworthy, right? Um, this whole series is going to be aimed at the affluent buyer. Why not? If you get to choose any kind of client you want, why not choose the affluent buyer? Uh, why would you choose people who can't afford your service? So this is going to be aimed at the affluent buyer and decision makers in those situations who can and will buy. And again, we get to make the rules. Why not aim our marketing and our strategies and the way we add value to the market to the affluent buyers, the people who can most use our help? Uh, we're going to talk about the seven steps very briefly in each segment so you'll always know where in the process we are. And what that means to you is if you happen to come in halfway through, you'll know relative to other things where to go back and listen again or, or what portion we're talking about if you feel like you're strong in the other areas already. And some of you certainly are. Um, I'm going to always remind us that trust is the biggest factor in decision making right now from the buyer. And the buyer is actually front and center in this conversation. I am going to be talking about sales strategies, but I want you to remember something that Zig Ziglar said many years ago. Selling is something you do to people. Helping them buy is something that we do with people. And so I am more interested in helping people buy because I'm proud of the product or service that I produce, create, build, make, sell, etc. Then I am wanting to sell somebody something. I don't, I don't really care about selling somebody something. I want to find the right people and help them buy because I believe in my solution, the thing we make, the way we make it, the thing we build, the way we build it, the thing we install, how we install it, etc. So uh, if you're not interested in that, if you just want to be some sort of fly-by-night scammer, go listen to somebody else, hang up this, uh, no offense, no harm, no foul, but you're not going to find uh, friends here. We are helping people buy. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about simple systems. Simple systems actually can be applied to sales. I've been doing it for years. Top salespeople always have. And the reason that we do that is we want to remove the random. 
Sales is not random. It's not random conversations. If you're following a process in your sales process that, that's random, then you're getting random results. But if you follow a tried and true process, this seven step uh, series, by the way, is a process. Uh, if you follow that, then you'll get the results you want. And, uh, and of course, I'll always tell you where we are in the flowchart. So here we are today. We're on session number two because the first one was an introduction. So now we're going to be talking about prospecting. Prospecting is going out there and finding raw leads, right? just raw leads. After that, and, and maybe you should write this down. If you've got a pen and paper, why not write down what, uh, what the list is going to be so you can follow along as well. Today, right now, we're talking about prospecting. After that, we'll talk about the qualifying stage. And then we talk about the appointment setting stage. Now, sometimes those three stages happen in the same meeting, and that's okay. They are steps in the process. But first, it goes prospecting. Second, qualifying. Third, appointment setting. Then we get to presenting. Presenting is the sales meeting. And lesser salespeople, junior salespeople, immature salespeople, they think that's the only stage. It's not. It's step four. And that's why so many other salespeople lose. Why well, they lose when they go up against me. There's... You're, you're starting at step four and I'm starting at step one. You, you're never going to catch up. And then we go to, after presenting, we go to closing. Now, closing is a non-event. It's a word that we use to talk about asking for the deal, but it really should be a non-event, especially if you're a professional consultative type of salesperson. Then we get into objection handling and closing and objection handling and presenting can also happen in the same meeting as well. So draw a circle around those and then follow up and follow up comes afterwards. Okay, so that just gives you perspective as to where we're at. Great. Let's get into prospecting a little bit. Uh, hopefully you've drawn that flow chart out, but I want you to understand the goal of the prospecting step. The reason that we do prospecting has one very specific goal, and that goal is to find a qualified buyer. We still call them a prospect because they haven't bought from us. I want to find a qualified buyer who can make a decision quickly, who can afford it and needs what we make, build, or sell. That's all it is, right? Um, the best outcome from this, the best outcome from prospecting is that we set an appointment in the next three days with that qualified person. And why is three days important? Because time kills deals. Time has always been a deal killer. As soon as I find somebody who's interested in the market, I need to follow up with them very, very quickly and set the next step and keep them moving, right? So the best outcome you can get for this is an appointment set with that prospect in the next three days to continue this conversation sooner if you can sooner if you can. And then the trust tips I want to give you is this is when you start talking to this prospect, this qualified potential buyer about your process and your systems, why you can be trusted. Uh, some of my clients have done a really, really good job of this. They will shoot videos just on their phone, shoot videos on their phone, how we clean our trucks and vans at our company. And they post that to YouTube. They post that to their website. They post it to Facebook so that new potential clients see that on their site and go, hey, these guys really care about this COVID situation. This is how they clean their van. This is how they clean their trucks. This is how they clean the bathrooms in their shop. But this is how the guys clean the tools. Any of those little tiny videos, you might think, ah, it's not worth doing it. It's worth doing it if you want to survive and thrive at the end of this, because this will pass and everybody will be out of their houses again. And we're going to be going to look for the services that we need and we're going to want to buy them from people we trust. And I want to see those breadcrumbs, call them breadcrumbs, those little videos, those little proof items. So talk about the fact that I can trust you. Show me I can trust you. Show me you're trustworthy in the prospecting stage. A very important takeaway on this. Please write this down. There is no selling in the prospecting stage. You're not selling your product. You're not selling your service. You're not selling what you make, build, sell, or install. You're not selling that here. You're just making sure the person you're talking to is a qualified potential purchaser, and then you're moving them forward into the process where you now qualify them and find out more. But there's no selling at this stage whatsoever other than talking about what you do and how you do it, but there's no selling. And if you're concerned about that, if you're curious about that, stick through the whole series and I'll explain how that comes to life. All right. The question I want you to ask, the question we're here to answer is, you need to know this. Am I here to make more sales versus more of the right sales? How can I help more people that need me and need what we do? How can I help more people that need me and what we do? So maybe in the old days, you thought 
hey, we build, well, let's just say solar, you know, we install solar panels. I need more solar panel clients. I need people who want solar panels or I need roofing clients. That's looking at the world through your eyes. The world has changed, as you know. Now, the way we need to think is very different. How can I help people? How can I help people that need a roof and need a roof right now? How can I find people who need a solar panel solution now, who need a solar install now, who want to live off grid, who are a little bit concerned about being tied to the grid? How do I find those people, right? And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. Whatever construction you do, if you're a house painter, if you install fire alarm systems, if you do cabinetry and kitchen countertops, whatever it is, how can I find people that need me now instead of just saying, I need more kitchen countertop business. That's the old way of looking at things. And that is now gone. Three weeks, it's what, third or fourth week of this now, that world is gone. And so unless you're changing, unless you're adapting and growing, you are going to be left behind. I'll always be here for you, but you, the clock is ticking and you've got to uh, change the way you do things, right? Um, so you really want to define your who. We call it knowing your who. Who is my who, we call it. So think about the affluent buyer. Think about people who can afford what you make, build, or sell, or install. Think about people who want to make that decision quickly and figure out where they are. That'll create something for you called a heat map. There's certain parts of town that are more likely to buy from you at the right price. There's certain types of people. There's certain type of applications of ways of using your product or service. Think about those people and think about creating that list so you know who to prospect from. There is no use going to people who can't afford it, don't need it, will never want it, and, and are just going to waste your time. I mean, you can go after that, but what a waste of time, right? Go after the people who can afford you, who want to meet you, who need the, so the solutions and the services you provide. That's where you got to go, right? So go ahead and do that. All right. And um, think about why they need it and really get clear as to why they need it. If they need solar panels, if they need uh, house painting, if they need a pond installed at their home, why do they need that? And how can you help them with that? The better you understand your client, the better you'll be able to help your client. And they will help. <laughs> you'll help them because you'll also provide them services or products and solutions, right? So find ways now. Let's talk about prospecting in a little bit of a bigger concept. Um, you've got to find ways to reach out to those people. So hopefully you understand by now the power of being online and being online properly. Just because you're on Facebook, are you using Facebook properly? Just because you have a website, is your waste is your is your website being used properly? Go go look at your website. Actually, even better, ask somebody who's never seen your website to look at your website and give you feedback. Are you showing up in local search listings? Are you showing up on uh, contractor review sites? And I know they do cost money, Howes and Angie's List and things like that. But is it worth it? How much does it cost you to buy leads from there? and then go service those leads, it might be worth it. For the way you do business, it might not. I don't know, but you need to know that answer because the affluent buyers are gonna be looking for trust. So if I can't trust you, if I can't find you online, I can't trust you. If I can't find you online, how can I find you later when I need to ask you questions about warranty, service, quality control, safety? How will I ever find you? If you can't be found online, you don't exist. You might think that's funny. You might be laughing at me right now, but. Those days are over, right? You are selling carburetors in a world of fuel injection that is now turned to electric engines, right? So make sure that I can find you and can trust you. Look at your, we call them online channels. Is your website up to date? Do you have local search engine listings? Is Facebook set up properly? Is, uh, are you using Instagram? Are you in places where your ideal client goes? Maybe it's LinkedIn. LinkedIn is only affluent buyers, but it's a certain kind of market. Maybe it doesn't work with what you do, but you have to understand that and think about it. That is the role of a business owner. And that's who I hope I'm speaking to here. So you've got to think about those things. Now let's move from the online world to, to the online world, to the offline world, which is the real world. There's ways to stand out there that are very, very inexpensive and can help you stand out. One of them, and this is very, very much guerrilla marketing tactics. One of them is to uh, go after something called silent auctions, charity silent auctions. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a map of your region, your city, where you like to do work. And think about where the most affluent people live in that region, right? Draw a little circle around that. Maybe it's not a circle. Maybe it's a weird shape, but draw a weird shape around that area, right? Let's say it's Upper Hawksworth. They all live in Upper Hawksworth. 
So draw your little shape around Upper Hawksworth. And in that area, I want you to go find all of the churches and private schools that you can find in that area and make a list of that. Okay. So now we've got Upper Hawksworth identified. I hope Upper Hawksworth is a nice part of town wherever you live. Right. But go and find all the, the, the private schools and the churches in that area, maybe even the golf clubs in that area. Add that to the list and then get the name and address of each. Get that put on a spreadsheet and then contact each of those places and offer to donate to their next charity silent auction and the reason i say some of you already got this why i'll ask this as a coaching question why would i ask you to go after churches private schools and golf clubs in upper hawksworth why would they be a good place to go because that's exactly where the affluent people in that neighborhood hang up and so if you now have something in the charity silent auction that points the, the person who wins the bid back to you, you now have a great lead. That particular marketing tactic works so well that your frustration will be this. You will have one frustration and it will be this. There's not enough charity silent auctions out there. They are that good a marketing strategy. So think about that. Think about charity silent auctions and how you can tie into that. It's very quiet. Nobody knows it's happening. And you get right to the decision maker when their guard is down when they're out having a glass of wine with their friends, raising money for their kids' school. It's the last place they expect to see marketing from you if you do cabinetry or pest control or painting or pond maintenance or landscaping, whatever it is. And there you are, there's your bid or there's your, your package, right? That's the first one. The second one, get ready for your, holding onto your hat for this one. I wanna stand out. I wanna be seen as somebody who solves problems, who's a little bit clever, who's out there helping the community. And so what I want you to do is I want you to get signs printed up that go on those wire stands. Now, the wire stand is galvanized steel uh, rods, and it's usually in the shape of an H, right? In the shape of an H. And then what you're going to do is put a sign on top of that, right? So get your sign made, and the sign's going to say, another beautiful project for a beautiful home, et cetera, right? So I don't know what industry you're in. You're in, say, landscape maintenance proudly provided by Dom's Landscaping, okay? But what you're going to do is you're going to take disposable doggy bags and you're going to make a little cut in the in the wire rod you're going to pull it apart a little bit slide the doggy bag over that and then push it forward it's not even going to affect the stability of the sign then put the sign back now when people are walking in the neighborhood the affluent neighborhood of upper hawksworth i think that's what i said upper hawksworth um and they see a doggy bag they're like oh wow this is great let me grab a doggy bag so i have one and we'll look at this clever sign here. Who's that? That's Dom's Landscaping Services. Another quality project. Yeah, they did really do a nice job. Maybe we should call them. And out comes the cell phone, and they take a picture. That, my friend, is low cost, high impact local marketing. You're creating a heat map of interest, and you will own that area, and you will be as busy as you want with people who can and will afford to buy your services, who've seen your work, and who already like you because you took care of their dog, right? If you're a dog person, you know what I mean. Dog people love dog people. And so now you're a dog person and you're right in there. If you can figure out how to put horse doggy bags on those things, then you let me know. Okay, that is what I want to talk about for prospecting today. Always keep your eyes open, your ears open, looking for new opportunities. Make sure you're adding value to those people. Um, aim for the affluent market. Um, make sure you understand that prospecting is the top of the funnel and all you're trying to do in prospecting is get somebody to the qualifying stage which we'll talk about next. And I hope you stay tuned for that because there are four ingredients you need to understand in the qualifying stage before you can even move somebody forward. If you miss that stage, you are totally wasting your time and a waste of time is a waste of money. All right, thank you so much, everybody. And thanks again to HES, Home Energy Solutions Photovoltaic. That's what they're called, HESPV, for sponsoring this series. If you have any questions, ping me here on Facebook Messenger and I'm happy to get back to you. Have a great day and we'll talk to you all soon.